Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. This is the next video in my series on Kaggle competitions and some of the techniques that I use for them. In this video, I'm going to talk about ensembling. Now, ensembling really takes on a life unto its own. Some of the pillars of Kaggle is probably feature engineering, ensembling, and, and the various forms of gradient boosting. These are some of the big things that are used in Kaggle competitions to do extremely well. That you'll, If you just look at Kaggle at the highest level, these are the things you'll always hear about. If you're interested in this sort of thing and you want to see more on Kaggle, definitely click the the likes buttons and the subscribe button and also click on the little bell so that you can be notified when I create new videos. So ensembling is when you take multiple models that you produced. The previous video showed you how to train them, so you'll want to go through probably the previous videos on my playlist first. And those will show you how to create models. Now in my framework of tools, these models are basically directories. And let's take a look at the framework of tools and we'll see how we actually fit this into the overall Kaggle strategy. And of course, if you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of any additional videos that I create. Okay, if you go to my GitHub repository, I have a link to this in the description, but these are my Kaggle utilities. This is not something you can just pip install. This is just a starting point for your Kaggle competitions. It's the starting point I use myself. I update it as I do more Kaggles. If you'd like to see other things or maybe watch me actually poise this up and compete on a live Kaggle, just let me know in the comments. This is where I get all my ideas is from, from the comment sections of these videos. Now this shows you the utilities and how they flow together. Now in previous videos, and some future videos, we will look at all of these. Now look at the playlist because it always gives you the latest versions of these videos that correspond to this, this tool set. Now we're at the very end. We're here. We're going to take the output of your models, other people's models. This is an important part of the strategy. If other people release models that beat yours, don't freak out. It happens all the time. You have to have a flexible strategy so that you can take their models and incorporate them with your models. You have to just modify their model output so that it produces the standard directory format that my ensembler wants. And I'll have a video just on just on how to do that, how to take just sort of a random model that somebody's posted on Kaggle, get that out of sample CSV file that you need and the submit CSV file that my ensembler needs. So let's have a quick look at the directory structure and see what this is really going to do. So here's all these models that I've produced. Well, the directories are. And if you go into the directory of any of these guys, it has several files. We've seen what these are for in previous videos. But for the ensembler to work, you need some, you need the submit file. Sorry, the submit CSV file. You need that file. That is literally the file that you would submit to Kaggle to be scored upon. And then the out of sample predictions. And the out of sample predictions is just, it's, it's just like the submit file, except it's for the training data. So using a cross validation technique, you're able to generate out of sample predictions. That just means each of these predictions, the model did not train on any of the any of the values that are being predicted. Otherwise, you'd be horribly overfit. And it's not good to be overfit in machine learning. And the important thing is those two files, so long as you can generate those two files in that format from any model that anybody has produced, one of which is the standard format that you submit to Kaggle, the submit file, the other is just out of sample data in that same format, you can ensemble it. So we'll... We'll see how to do that more and we'll see how to adapt other people's models to this in a future video. And by the way, the output from the ensembler is going to be a directory just like these. It essentially takes multiples of these directories and ensembles them together and then gives you yet another standard standard format directory that has a submission to Kaggle file and everything. So what some of you are now asking is, can you ensemble ensembles together? And yes, you can. 
you probably shouldn't, but you can. So now, if we wanted to run this, if you go to Ensemble GLM and open it up, it has a list here. This is the list of models that you want to ensemble together. Now, I put two of these in here already. You can ensemble just two models together, or you can ensemble a lot of them together. Don't worry about ensembling too many, typically. A really bad model will probably drop, drop out of this, and I'll show you how to do this. This is fitting a GLM for it. Now, this is only, Ensemble GLM currently only works for regression. Now, sooner or later, I'm going to take on another Kaggle competition. The last one that I did that had classification was something called the Auto Group Challenge. I'll either adapt it so that it works for that, or I'll adapt it for classification the next time. It's not trivial to adapt this thing to classification. I would have to do a one versus rest strategy. And by the way, if you want the technical details of how this is actually working, I cover that in my deep learning course, and I will put a link to that particular course module here. And you can see literally exactly how I'm building the, the input data for the GLM. And we're using a lasso, so we, we encourage this really to try to cut off inputs or models if they're not needed. And by the way, these are all the different types of models that you can, that you can use to combine these together. Linear regression is the most simple. I prefer this one. But you can use really any of these that you that you want. This typically runs very quickly, so let's go ahead and run it. And here we have the output. The output to this is really pretty interesting. So it shows you some statistics here. It shows you that basically it gives you a estimate of what the score is. This is really, really a rough estimate. It's hard, it's hard to tell because we're not doing Ideally, would we would do a holdout that we never even sent to the trainer, and some people prefer that in Kaggles. I tend not to because I don't have a lot of data to begin with, and I want to fit on all the data that I have. That might punish me in overfitting, but it has not... Because you can overfit the leaderboard for sure in Kaggle, but... I... It's just the strategy that I go, to, go with that may change in the future, but let's look at these two models. XGBoost and AdaBoost. So what this is telling you is 0 0.93. These should add up to 100 or 1.0. But this is showing you that it is putting 93% of its belief in the XGBoost model and only 6 in AdaBoost. Does that mean you should throw away AdaBoost? Absolutely not because it is I mean, it's it's still contributing something to the model. Very often in these ensembles, you will have one particularly strong model. And if you look, here's the blend that it just created. So you, if you wanted to submit this, you would use the zip file here and submit that to Kaggle, and you would get your result. This just shows you the score that it came up with and the actual... Uh, coefficients or the weightings of the individual models. Now say we want to throw some of these others into here as well. Like maybe we want to put TensorFlow into here. So this is a TensorFlow model that I trained really pretty quickly just testing it. I don't think it's going to be particularly strong. So you go back up to here, add in another line, you do that, and then we can rerun it. Now we have three models, and that is interesting. The TensorFlow one, this is, I, I put zero, it's not even a deep neural network, but the TensorFlow one, which is, which is really using Keras, it's decent. It's, it's holding up with the AdaBoost. It's not as powerful as XGBoost, but that's typical on some of these, but these, these can be very good ones to blend in. I also really like blending in AK nearest neighbors because it's, it's just very different. It's very orthogonal to, what these others are doing. If you see ones just approaching zero, getting very very low, you'll tend to want to take off your lower ones and you can submit it to Kaggle or just just evaluate and see where it's where it's keeping you. Don't do too much submitting to Kaggle and risk overfitting the leaderboard. I mean unless you're going crazy with that, you're probably not going to overfit to the leaderboard, but don't but, but definitely be be aware of that. So now in here, you'll have another blend file. 
And this is essentially your model that you can now submit the zip file to Kaggle and you're, you're good to go on this, on this competition. So this is really just showing you how to use my, my blending utility that can create several different variants of this. You'll want to experiment with it yourself, see if the lasso one or linear regression or which one gives you really the best, the best results. Okay, this is how I ensemble things for Kaggle, at least for regression. Classification will hopefully be coming in the future. I'll probably update this video. So definitely keep an eye on the playlist, subscribe to my channel, and uh, let me know in the comments. Send me likes if you like this type of video and want to see more because that sends a good message as far as what you would like to see. Thank you for watching.